Hi, my name is Garrick and I'm here with Zero-G to give you a getting started video for Zero-G's latest release, Eastern Percussion Module. Eastern Percussion Module is a contact instrument based around percussion ensembles, MIDI loops and round robins. Not only does it have a whole host of MIDI loops performed by musicians, but it also includes four FX, an EQ, transient shaper, compressor and tape emulator but it has a full mixing panel complete with reverb sends and individual instrument options. Let's dive into the interface now and have a look what it's got to offer. So the first thing to notice about the interface is that it's really clearly laid out. It's got a very nice design and it's very intuitive to work around. Each of these tracks is a separate instrument. Uh, these are unchangeable uh, because they are actually locked to the region you'd be working in. There are four regions included so far. We're currently on the Eastern mix. Um, so in the Eastern mix, we've got these uh, instruments set out and they actually come, uh, when you load up the preset, they come ready balanced uh, to play with. So let's have a look at the individual, individual instruments first and go on from there. So you can hear there's actually a little bit of variation every time I hit a note. That's going to add a level of realism with the difference in timbre and tuning. Uh, let's skip through. So the bandier is a drum in various sizes in this module. That gives us a nice range of timbres to work with. Um, loads of articulations on the rick. Um, on the Dora. Some nice phrases. Okay, so I mean, looking at the instruments laid out, there's loads of articulations. It's really set to go the you can play all of these instruments via keyboard and you can set them up one at a time but what i would actually recommend you do is take advantage of the midi loops that are included let's have a look at the file system now so we'll go over to midi mode now on the right side here you will see that there is a file button just go click that and you're opened up i think there's a total of 26 sets of midi loops all of which are BPM registered and they give you the time signature as well. Uh, you'll find that there are something like four intros, four variants and a load of fills uh, in each one as well. So uh, let's just, let's say we open up this ballady. And if we press the fast forward button, that should take us on to the next patch. So you can hear we're still very much within the same uh, style uh, of, of drumming, but the rhythms have changed up. So let's move on to... So each different uh, MIDI loop is very uh, unique and separate to the one before it. Um, with the way that the mixing desk is already laid out, with the way the interface is laid out, you've got a really nice stereo field as well, with some drums being panned left, some being panned right. Uh, you will notice above the panning rotary encoders, above the panning knobs, you'll have a send. These send over to the reverb right at the end, at which point you can pick what reverb you like. Uh, so let's just leave it in the concert hall. Um, have a reasonably loud, I'll just exaggerate the reverb size. Uh, and if I just up the pre-delay a little bit so we can separate the original sounds from the, rever uh, the reverberated sounds. Let's see how that works. So let's just go back. Uh, let's just play the basic. So 
so you can blend that in nice and subtly as well. Um, and it just creates this really nice effect, actually. Um, the reverbs, I'd say, are really varied and really nice. Uh, let's just take it over to, say, a small cave. As you can hear, the early reflections are a lot more indicative of a smaller environment. And because they're so clear, uh, it gives you that impression of, of hard surface walls, which would amount to a small cave. So now we're going to look at what we can do with each individual instrument track. I'm going to select the Darabuka track here, uh, put it on solo and just listen to uh, what the fills are doing. And then let's see what we can, what options we have to edit it. Okay, so in the settings tab we've got currently here, uh, we have type, tune, attack, hold, and decay. Uh, in type, if we move it, we've got A, B, C, and D. And they've all got slightly different tones to them, as you can hear. Um, over in tune, it's exactly what you think it is. Up to seven semitones. You can also adjust the attack value, meaning that you can take away some of the attack as we make it longer. And we can change the hold and decay options as well. To be honest, I would do most of this editing in the transient shaper just because uh, it's a bit more intuitive. Uh, now, looking over to the right, we've got the EQ module. So let's go in there. So we've got low frequency, low mid, uh, high mid and high frequencies with all the gains and a general output. Now you can, with the low filter frequency, you can change it so that it's also a bell. But again, I would tend to leave it on the shelf. Next up is the transient shaper. Now this is the one that I would suggest you use instead of the attack hold decay. So yeah, you can hear the sound drastically changing. Finally, we've got the tape emulator which is really cool. You can use it very creatively to make a sort of synthy sound out. Um, so let's plug that on. So it almost becomes like this, this actual synth tone uh, with a lot of percussion backing to it. Um, it takes it to a real, really far extreme, but you can use it in that sort of sense. And I guess uh, if we adjust the reverb a little bit. There you go, something a bit different that you can do with it. I'm now going to show you how to use EPM inside of an actual project. I'm running Logic Pro X on an iMac and we're going to have a look at how we can drag and drop the MIDI samples from EPM into the project and have a look at a more mainstream application uh, using this sound back, i.e. in a dance tune. Let's have a look now. So we've got EPM loaded up in a plugin in Contact. Uh, let's have a listen to the MIDI regions that I've got loaded up. Okay, so pretty nice. Um, I'm not really feeling uh, like I like these regions a lot. Uh, so I think I'm going to delete them and change them out for something a bit different. Um, so what I want to do is open the file structure. I'm going to go into uh, 
what are we running at 127 something in the 120 region something nice and close to the bpm the uh, contact player will actually tempo map all of these samples so that they'll never be out of time with your host uh, with your project's host tempo and i'm going to drag in uh, variation two so what i want to do is double click it there and you'll see it shows variation two in the actual gui i'm then going to click on the arrow and drag and drop that into the actual project. I'm just going to trim that down. Uh, and I think I'm going to bring in variation four. So I double click that as well. Go to the arrow, drag it into the project there. Don't import. Trim that down. And just slide that into place. There is a reason that everything's offbeat and it'll become apparent in a minute. Uh, There we go. So let's have a listen to that now. So it's a little bit less tinny. It's got more, a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more in keeping with the other, uh, the other kind of patterns we've got going on. Really like it. That's really good. Uh, so now we're going to unmute the other regions. Just have a listen as to how I've mixed it in with this sample. Uh, these are samples from the Progressive House sample library from Zero G as well. Uh, also worth a look at. It's far more down the straight house route though. Uh, so it's not exactly geared towards uh, world percussion. But what you'll find is adding world percussion to this kind of track makes a really unique vibe um, and it'll definitely set your track apart from everyone else's. So let's have a listen now. It's really nice in that intro there uh, and what I do is probably just bring it down a little bit in the mix so uh, let's just have a listen with it a bit quieter as you can hear when when it's a bit quieter it definitely sits nicer in the mix um, and just adds a little bit of flavor to it something a little bit different than uh, every other dance track out there So yeah, really, really cool use of Eastern Percussion module uh, in a more contemporary track that isn't just devoted to world and ethnic music. Hopefully you've enjoyed this getting started video for Eastern Percussion module. It's a really in-depth instrument and we barely scrape the surface of what it's actually capable of. Um, there's loads of performances in there, loads of time signatures. Um, the FX are really, really good and you know, can create lots of depth and variation in all the sounds. Uh, we haven't even touched on the amount of articulations there are for each drum. There are absolutely hundreds. Um, it's honestly just this amazing resource for not only world and ethnic composers and producers, but also dance producers. Um, you could get this into film and cinematic scores as well. There's loads to be done with it. So I really recommend picking it up. It's just going to be an invaluable addition to your toolbox. Remember to like, share and subscribe for more content, tips, tricks and getting started videos. My name's Garrick. I've been here with Zero G and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.